<laughs> Apparently, around this time, so we're going to talk about Flair more for a, a reason. I've said uh, he had split. From he'd essentially been fired or suspended from WCW at this time a couple of weeks earlier because he wanted to go um, to his son's amateur wrestling meet, something like that, and he told Bischoff, and then Bischoff hadn't realised, and he booked him for Thunder. So apparently, and I'd only found this out a few days ago, is that the reason that Bischoff was so keen to have Ric Flair at this nondescript WCW Thunder show was because Ric Flair was going to be announcing a new four horsemen and you'll never guess i'll give you three of them and you'll never guess who the fourth one was uh so uh da, 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 where are we rick flair's new four horsemen would be himself dean malenko lex luger and guess who the fourth one would have been by the way there's there's more to this story but go ahead i uh i, I have no idea i've heard this Goldberg. Really? Well, what? Who? I would have shot the thing, huh? I mean, is yeah. Wow. Well, the the, the bad story to me, as I know, was Dean Malenko had flown in. We were at BCW. We were in Philadelphia, and Dean popped in, which was sort of unusual. And uh, says, "Go and get some sushi." So we went down to this great sushi bar down. Uh, I forget the name of the avenue, but you know, a couple blocks from the ECW ring. And Dean and I used to have this thing where he would say, or I would say to him, "Hey, don't say anything till I'm done, and then then, then reply." You know, it's just like let me get through. And uh, we sat down, and I knew something was up his sleeve. And he finally said, uh, "The recreating the four horsemen, and uh, you know, it's going to be these people, blah blah blah, and they want you to be the flare rule. Uh, Bishop wants you for the flare rule." And I said, uh, well, we thought about it. And look, I was happy in ECW. We loved ECW. And I said, you know, I respect the war on being. Dean, you know, Dean and I had a little hiccup there towards the end. And, and you know, we've gotten back on track. And uh, I'm glad to hear he's doing well. Um, but, you know, he wasn't really ECW. I had not fit the famous business that, you know, but probably wouldn't have left. But uh, I, I told him, you know, that, you know, he'd tell Bischoff, I'd thank him for you know, keeping me in mind. Yeah, hey, I didn't want to leave ECW. That was the biggest reason. And I'm also sure as hell didn't want to be the faux Ric Flair. You know, I had been the guy, remember, Paul wanted me to do his chop and his four, his figure four and his uh, woo. And I said, Are you out of your mind? I said, I'm the guy that's out there burying, pointing out his foibles. And now I'm going to go out and emulate him. I said, That just ain't going to happen. And, uh, uh, and I'm glad I didn't in hindsight, you know, just, you know, because he, what the franchise became was because there was that, you know, brains, there was roots. You can see, see clear roots of the franchise in that film. Uh, but, you know, there's that and a whole lot more, hopefully. I, that was my intent. But, uh, you know, so I, I just yeah, part of it would have been a lot of money and all that, I'm sure, on the table. But, you know, I just, I, I didn't see, yeah, I'm in the firm belief that the second anything is never as good as the first. Right. And, and the four horsemen had been such an iconic imprint in the DNA of wrestling uh, that, you know, and, uh, you know, it just it, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, you, we're never no matter how good we are. The fans will always say that hey, in those original. Guys, right. And again, for excuse me, playing you know, the flair read. You know, I just I just didn't see myself in that role. But this is also around the time. When he started with Bishop, that Flair floated the idea of leaving, you know, and, and uh, uh, that's when the arm would come up and all of that, and you know that, that whole conversation. And uh, you know, it was I don't know, you, you know, you'd have to ask Rick. I'm sure Rick would probably give you ten different stories over the years. On it, it sounded to me from Mark because you know Mark is a pretty straight shooter. It sounded to us that this was definitely something. That Flair was floating, and his biggest concern was what I shoot on, and you know, so I made the counter offer right there without even talking to him. I said, "Tell him we'll do it because we couldn't possibly pay him the kind of money. We couldn't say, here's a million bucks.' You know, even though Party would have made a bunch of money with it. Uh, you know, if they, imagine if Paul had been able to be the one that brought Flair and Douglas to 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 the world. I, mean, I think it would have been incredible. But we just weren't in position to pay that kind of money. So I, on the spot, made the counter. 
three matches uh, to, to show Rick my fealty. Uh, I'll lay down for him first in Charlotte. 50 minutes, 55 minutes, he lays down for me in Pittsburgh. We do the rubber match in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. Uh, pay-per-view, give him 10% of the game. And uh, Marty had later told me that you know he he really gnawed on for me, but ultimately would re-sign with, with uh, WCW. You know, Rick's such a political creature. I don't know if he was doing that just to dish off the better or else, right? That, which probably smarter this part to his paycheck. Uh, but well, you wonder like, what how Rick could have rekindled this career, you know, as, as hot as ECW was at this period. And uh, you know, him bringing this stuff in because he well, when we finally did have the match in WCW two, three years later. Um, you know, I, I can tell you if you go back and you watch that match, well, Ricky's laying his stuff in, you know, and 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 I'm and I'm firing back. You know, he's getting he's getting returned flat. Uh, but you know, he stayed there toe to toe. And he earned a, a modicum of respect for me then, uh, until the whole debacle of the finish. But yeah, this is all in that same time frame. So an interesting period of history, you know, the wrestling history, you know, the what ifs. What if Rick had come to WCW? Boy, well, I think it would have, you know, really, first of all, the top DC woman for sure. Uh, it certainly would have elevated the franchise character, but I think it would have really refreshed and renewed the nature boy too you know it's uh ecw had a real knack of doing it for guys that had been off scene for or you know on on the down side of the ladder and ripley just started to become the rope rick flair you know every spot the same you can almost call, i remember watching with my son later after he was born and we're watching the match like okay he's gonna do this next they, 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 about three, three, how do you know them? they said if you guys watch a rick flair match you can you can see it in your, you can instantly call what's coming next. Right? Uh, and this was the Ric Flair, this was the period of Ric Flair, uh, the, the Ric Flair story, 